Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul channel and I do have a new topic today. Before I begin, I just would like to say may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. And some people who I like to thank who have helped me and inspired me on my journey and I hope they can do uh, inspire you as well. And I'll have links below this video for where you can check them out. They are Rabbi Shalom Arish, Rabbi Lazar Brody, Rabbi Yosef Mizrahi, Rabbi Eli Mansour, Rabbi Alona Nava, Rabbi Daniel Asur, Rabbi, Rabbi Yuval Ovadia, Nisim Baruch Black, David Sachs, and Jews for Judaism, Rabbi Michael Skobak. And we're going to continue today with part three of uh, Talk in Shul, Where Do You Pray? Part three. From this book, Praying with Fire by Rabbi uh, Heshi Kleiman. I'll have a link. It's an art scroll series book. And um, the last video we talked a little bit about talking during prayer. And um, now we're going to get into more... Um, this is Talking During Prayer Part 2, I believe, is where we left off. Um, and then uh, we'll do probably part three and part four, which talk about specifically the areas um, that you have to be aware of as far as not talking um, within the davening. So um, this is for day 81. It says, so for all that shuls and communities have suffered from the grie grievous habit of conversing during prayer, the individual who participates suffers tremendously as well. He loses his spiritual standing and is identified with the worst of sins. Now this sounds terrible. And it is. <laughs> and it's not me making it up. It's, it's, written, it, it's written in so many places. Um, there's um, footnotes to where. So the Zohar says this. Um, identifies a person who speaks about worldly matters in shul as a kofer be'ikar, a heretic. That's a very strong word. The Rokeach adds... From Hilchos Tshuva, he adds that um, one who talks during prayer is guilty of masig gavul, stealing the sanctity of the shul. Rather than lowering himself to these levels and dragging others down with him, a person who habitually talks during prayer should stay home and pray alone, according to a halachic ruling issued by the Kaf HaChayim. So that's also pretty strong. If you're a man, unfortunately women don't have to be there. But if you're a man and, and you like to just gab, that's not what shul is for. Shul is not for telling the latest stock quotes and the scores of the games. If you like to talk, better stay home and pray because, first of all, you'll have more kavana because you'll have no one to bother you, hopefully. And the shul have more kav will, will be a place of kavana because they're not being disturbed. Sorry to say, it's just the truth. Um, a person who comes to shul and talks to others has been referred to as a chote umachti es harabim, a sinner who causes others to sin who forfeits his per portion in the world to come. Um, and that's very strong, too. Finally, the Aruch HaShulchan rules that one who talks during prayer is guilty of that severest of transgressions, Chilol Hashem, desecrating the name of Hashem. Since this habit reinforces the perception that non-Jews are more careful than Jews to maintain proper decorum in their house of worship. Now, this is very sad because if someone would come undercover to see what goes on in most shuls, It'll be very sad state of affairs. Um, I, I really am very sad to say that, that that's the truth. Um, people are not doing what they're supposed to. So if someone from another uh, religion would come in and see what's going on, um, they'd be very upset, I'm sure. Um, okay, continuing on. Uh, let's see. Rashi explains Hil Hashem as a quote, great person from whom other people will learn, who is not careful with his actions. Perhaps, perhaps, therefore, it is found that the smaller ones make light of the Torah because of him, the person that they learn from, and say that this great man really understands that Torah and mitzvahs have no substance. As a result, we find that Hashem's name is desecrated. So that's where the issue comes in, is that if you act that way and people look up to you, you're setting an example, and they probably will start think, thinking the same thing, like, oh, I guess it doesn't matter, I could just talk because he's talking, and it, it's not that big of a deal. But it is. The Be'er Halacha similarly warns that Achil Hashem is frequently created by those who openly converse during the Torah reading in shul. That's also a no-no. 
The impact of talking during prayer is sometimes perceived more keenly by newcomers to Judaism, who have not become desensitized to it. They cannot reconcile the great divide between what prayer truly is and how it is sometimes treated. So here's a story um, about a Baal Shiva who joined a minion that, that formed one morning in an Orlando hotel. Shafras was completed at breakneck speed, with many in the group neglecting to properly say the Pesuke de Zimra. Commemorate, comm commenting on the rapid pace of the prayer and the widespread talking, he exclaimed in frustration, what I just saw is enough to make a person turn away from Judaism. Now, imagine this is a Baal Shuva who's coming back full force and wants to do things right, and he sees this. What kind of an impression does that leave for anyone? Not a good one. If the chatter makes a bad impression upon a newcomer, imagine the deep and indelible impression it makes upon the children who consistently see adults talking during prayer. They are not in a position like the Baal Shuba to judge the situation. For them, it becomes established as the norm, and the importance of prayer is greatly diminished in their eyes. And you see this too all the time, unfortunately. The children learn from other people they see around them. So they just figure that that's okay, I could just do that as well. All of this leaves us with bitter irony, with a bitter irony. So many people undertake the obligation to arise early and pray with a minion every day. Yet their efforts bring sin and spiritual disaster upon them, or perhaps upon their shul and community as well. This obviously cannot be their goal. We can settle for this sad status quo or shake off old habits and reach much, much higher. We are electing the Jewish people's future, and every vote counts. So yes, so we have to start working on that and realize we are an influence upon others. I think that's what that day mostly was kind of gearing towards, that don't do that, you're creating a chal Hashem, and especially for other people who are not Jews. So now we're going to continue on to Talking During Prayer Part 3, um, and this is for Day 82. Ideally, there should be no talking in shul from the beginning to the end of the prayer. That's ideal, but unfortunately, it's not the norm. This should be the long-range goal of every congregation. Idle talk, which even includes conversation about one's livelihood or other essential needs, is forbidden in shul, even when prayer, prayers are not being recited. Nowadays, there is some room for leniency. Concerning some such talk when prayers are not being recited, since some Rishonim rule that shuls are generally built with a precondition allowing them to be used for essential matters other than prayer. Okay, During certain portions of tefillah, talking is prohibited for additional reasons as well. From a halakhic point of view, it is important to distinguish the reasons. Sometimes talking is considered a hefsake, an interruption. If this hefsake occurs where not even a single word is permitted to be uttered regardless of need, Remember, not a single word you're allowed, and this is including Birchas Kriya Shema and Shema, Shemona Esrei, Kedusha, and Hallel. It may invalidate the portion of the tefillah that is being interrupted. At other times, talking is prohibited because the congregation must give its undivided attention to that portion of the prayer, or because of shul decorum, such as Kaddish and Chazar Sashats. In those cases, an exception can be made when a special need arises, allowing one to quietly murmur a few words. It is important to note that regardless of the portion of prayer being recited, according to the Mishnah Brewer, one who is wearing tefillin should be scrupulous to refrain from idle talk at all times. So when you're wearing tefillin, tefillin is a covenant. So you made a covenant with Hashem and then you start talking like, oh Hashem, you don't matter. That's what it seems like because you're being involved in a covenant with Hashem and then you're doing something else. To avoid error, one must acquire knowledge of where and when interruptions are permitted, where and why they are prohibited, and to what degree. Below is a brief summary of this vital information presented in the order of daily prayer. So we're going to go through that, and hopefully we'll go, be able to go through um, day four, which continues on. Um, so, between Berch HaShachar and Baruch She'amar, there is no specific halacha which prohibits talking, however... During this section of tefillah, one should apply the previously mentioned general reason for prohibiting talking. Um, and then during Kaddish, talking is strictly forbidden, as one must pay full attention so that he can say Amen properly. So there's a story related. The tour cites the following illustrated story from Sefer Hasidim. After his death, a certain pious man appeared to another pious man in a dream. As the apparition's face was distinctly yellow, the other man asked him, Why, why is your face so yellow? The apparition answered, because I used to speak during Yisgadal, which is Kaddish. So imagine, that's what happened to him. The Mate Moshe cites a midrash which relates that a certain Torah scholar appeared to his pupil in a dream, and the pupil noticed that the scholar had a stain on his forehead. 
The pupil, asked, the pupil asked him why this happened to him, and he answered that it was because he did not avoid speaking while the chazan said Kaddish. Again, very strong information coming in a dream to relay this information that this is what happens in Shemayim. What happens is you, based on, I guess, I think it's the, the Averos that you do, you're, certain parts of you have like stains on them, things that are kind of built up that I guess have to be hopefully cleaned at some point. But that's what happens. Certain parts of your body will show up that way. Both of these stories, which, while relating consequences suffered in the world to come, actually speak of the here and now. They illustrate the spiritual disfigurement a person inflicts upon himself each time he speaks when he's prohibited from doing so. So, of course, in our physical form, you don't see the blemishes, but as a soul, they, it's a spiritual blemish that you see. Um, he may not see this blemish in the mirror when he arrives home from shul, but is there nonetheless, and in the world of truth becomes apparent. So now next, during Pesuke de Zimra, and af but after Baruch Shemar, unless there is an emergency, it is forbidden to talk during this time, as it would constitute an interruption between the blessing of Baruch Shemar and the blessing of Yishtabach. Then between Yishtabach and Baruch Hu, it is permitted to talk for a pressing mitzvah need only. Between Baruch Hu and Yotzer or Shacharis or Mariv Ar Mariv Arivim in Mariv, it is forbidden to talk. During Berchas Kriya Shema and during Shema, it is forbidden to talk. It should be considered an interruption, it could be, sorry, considered an interruption in the middle of a blessing, which may invalidate the blessing. Between Ga'al Yisrael and Shemona Esrei, it is strictly forbidden to talk, since it would interrupt the crucial connection between Ga'ula and Tefillah. During Shemona Esrei, it is strictly forbidden to talk, as it constitutes an interruption in Tefillah. If one spoke inadvertently during one of the blessings of Shemona Esrei, he must repeat the blessing. Then after Shemona Esrei, but before Chazar Shashat, it is forbidden to talk if it will disturb the concentration of others who are still praying. Um, so then at the um, footnote for that says that, um, according to the Mishnah Brura, um, when a person says Shemona Esrei with a minion, he should not raise his voice in prayer to avoid disturbing others while he's praying, right? Certainly one can derive that you should not do so in casual conversation. So it applies when you're not saying it and other people are. And then during Chazar Shashat, um, we are going to get to that um, probably the next time. So we'll, we won't answer that um, question for Chazar Shashat until we get to it. So let's just finish up and do talking during prayer part four for day 83. And we're going to still go through some more places uh, about talking. So this is a continuation of the laws of talking during prayer. During Kedusha, it is strictly forbidden to talk. Total concentration is essential. During Nesias Kapayim, or Berchas Kohanim, it is forbidden to talk or even to learn Torah or recite Tehillim. As complete attention must be paid to the Kohanim. Don't forget, the Kohanim are praying Tashem for us. So if we're going to be busy with other things, what respect does that show? It shows total disrespect. Next, between Chazar Shashat and Tachanun, it is inappropriate to talk since there should be no interruption between Shimon Esri and Tachanun. Um, then, between Tachanun and Kriya HaTorah, the reading of the Torah, there is no specific prohibition against talking. However, during the section of prayer, one should apply the previously mentioned general reasons for prohibiting talking. During Kriya HaTorah, it is strictly forbidden to engage in idle talk or even to utter words of Torah during Kriya HaTorah. So, again, during Kriya HaTorah, no talking. No idle talk and no talk at all, not even Torah. One who speaks at this time is called a sinner, quote, a sinner whose sin is too great to be forgiven. That's how strong it is, and that's according to uh, the Be'er Halacha. Um, the, the severe criticism. Sinner whose sin is too great to be forgiven. Some authorities prohibit talking as soon as the Torah scroll is unrolled. Between Aliyos of Kriyasa Torah, there are several views. Some authorities, authorities prohibit talking totally. Others permit discussing words of Torah only, while others are even more lenient and also allow the type of talk which is permitted in shul. I would disagree personally. The reason why is because once you start talking idly, when it's time for the next aliyah, like you're in the middle of something, you want to keep talking. So it's best just not to talk. Um, next, during the Haftorah and its blessing, it is forbidden to talk as one must pay, so one, one must pay undivided attention. And don't forget also, um, during the blessings, um, you want to say amen. You know, you need to ha we need to say a certain amount of blessings, but when you say amen, that counts as you saying the blessings, so paying attention is important. Between Kriyasa Torah and end of Tefillah, there is no specific prohibition against talking. 
However, during this section of prayer, one should apply the previously mentioned general reasons for prohibiting talking. During Hallel, it is forbidden to talk. Doing so could be considered an interruption of Hallel, because what's Hallel? We're praising Hashem. So, again, your talks during Hallel, then you're neglecting Hashem. Chas v'shalom. Like, he's not important. Okay? Uh, during Kabbalah Shabbos on Friday night, there's no specific prohibition against talking. However, during this section, one should again apply the previously mentioned general reason for prohibiting it. During Vayichulu and Magain Avos on Friday night, it is forbidden to talk. During Chazar Sashat's Kriyas Torah and Haftorah on Shabbos, so this is, the others was for during the week when they read the Torah, which is on Mondays and Thursdays. Um, so besides the prohibition against talking during Chazar Sashat's Kriyas Torah and Haftorah cited above, talking on Shabbos during Chazar Sashat's or during the blessing set of Kriyas Torah and Haftorah may also render one unable to fulfill his requirements to recite 100 brachos daily. So that's why it's important, especially Shabbos, because we have less brachos in davening. Normally one says even more than the required 100 blessings each day. However, on Shabbos, a person is 13 blessings short of the required 100. Consequently, he completes the total of 100 blessings by eating various foods of fruits and delicacies. If he is unable to do so, he can fulfill his obligation by listening attentively to the blessing says over Kriyas HaTorah and HaTorah and responding Amen. So you have to listen attentively. Baruch, Hata, Hashem, blah, 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 blah. You have to listen what they're saying and then you can answer Amen because you've heard the Amen is they're responding because you're acknowledging what they say. So that's important. Um, and then he also may fulfill his obligation by listening to Chazar Sashat. Harav Shimon Schwab sums up the Torah viewpoint on the subject of talking during Tefillah as follows. For Hashem's sake, let us be quiet in the Beit HaKnesses. In the Beit HaKnesses, he's saying the plural. Our reverent silence during the Tefillah will speak very loudly to him, who holds our fate in his hands. Communicating with Hashem is our only recourse in this era of trial and tribulations. There is too much ugly noise in our world today. Let us find peace and tranquility while we stand before Hashem in prayer. Now that's beautiful from Rav Shimon Schwab. Um, so we need to be quiet so that Hashem can hear us. We need to speak loudly, so to speak, by being quiet. Because Hashem, our fate is in His hands, as He says. So that's very important. So let's all try to remember this. And I'll, we'll be continuing this again um, in the next video. And I hope and pray that everyone will really heed these words and follow these directions. And... When we pray, we want Hashem to hear our prayers and answer our prayers. And, and the biggest thing we want is for the coming of Mashiach and that we can merit to live and see it speedily in our days and the rebuilding of our final everlasting base Hamigdash. Amen and thank you for watching.